What if one of the most viral Roblox games wasn't just about farming crops, but about farming ideas? Millions of people are playing Grow a Garden, but as an education professor, I see something more. This cozy game is secretly packed with lessons about how we learn. In this video, I'll explore six powerful concepts, experiential learning, self-efficacy, math as strategy, systems thinking, growth mindset, and media literacy. And I'll show you how every click in this garden hides a teaching moment. If a game teaches, it should move beyond doing to learning. Does Grow a Garden exemplify experiential learning? I'm planting two seeds with different growth times, tomatoes and blueberries. That's our concrete experience. Now let's reflect. Which one felt more efficient and why? Next, thinking. Maybe faster growth beats higher price early on because I can reinvest sooner in planting other fruits and veggies. Finally, acting. In the next round, I'll prioritize quick grow seeds and track outcomes. That's Kolb's experiential learning cycle. Experiencing, reflecting, thinking, and acting. The game supplies plenty of experiences, but it doesn't automatically create reflection. As an education prof, I'd add a simple function in the game. After each harvest, make players think about what changed and why. With that reflection, casual play becomes experiential learning. Does Grow a Garden help players believe they can succeed, or just keep them clicking? Self-efficacy from Albert Bandura is our belief in our ability to complete a task. In Grow a Garden, small wins matter. Planting a seed, harvesting, and seeing visible progress builds confidence. Each success says, I can do this, which fuels motivation for harder goals. The game scaffolds this with early easy crops that grow fast, then nudges us towards more complex strategies. From a player's perspective, those quick wins make the game inviting instead of overwhelming. You actually feel yourself getting better. Without noticing it, your confidence grows right alongside your garden. Now which seed is actually better? Let's do the math. I'm comparing two seeds, an orange tulip and a tomato. They have different prices, different growth times, and different sell prices. Now players can compute profit per minute. That's selling minus the cost divided by growth time. If the orange tulip costs 600 cents and grows in seven seconds, and the tomato costs 800 cents but can take several minutes to grow, but it results in a harvest of multiple tomatoes. So a helpful discussion would be to compare why you chose to harvest the orange tulip or why you choose to harvest the tomatoes. This kind of reflection turns a cozy game into an applied math lab. We can look at unit rates, proportional reasoning, and decision making. The payoff? Players experience math as a tool for strategy, not just boring drills. Every garden is a system, but where's your bottleneck in the system? We have inputs like seeds, time, currency. We have processes like the growth cycle of the seeds. Outputs, such as the harvest value. And there are feedback loops. We reinvest profits to expand capacity. Now, let me diagnose the constraints. Am I limited by plot space, the seed cost, the growth time? If my inventory is full, capacity is the bottleneck. If I'm cash starved, cost is. So players can draw a simple diagram and mark bottlenecks with a star. Next, propose a targeted intervention. We can expand plots, switch to faster seeds, or schedule harvest more efficiently. This is transferable from gardens to supply chains to study routines. Educationally, the win is getting learners to name the constraints and design a small experiment to relieve it. Does offline progress build a growth mindset, or does it make us lazy gardeners? A growth mindset means believing we get better through practice and effort. But in Grow a Garden, your crops keep growing even when you're not playing. That's fun, but it can trick us into thinking improvement happens automatically. Real learning needs a loop. Try something, see what happens, and then try again differently. As a player, that might mean switching from slow, fancy crops to quicker ones and noticing the difference. Or redesigning your plot to make harvesting smoother. The key is paying attention to what you changed, not just how many coins piled up while you were asleep. 
So idle rewards are fine for relaxation, but the real growth, like in life, comes from effort and experimenting. If Robux buys speed, what's the lesson behind the lesson? Instead of judging purchases, I analyze design incentives. So pay to play mechanics shift goals from curiosity and planning to consumption and convenience. That's a great media literacy test case. So we can ask each other, what behaviors does the interface reward? Where are the friction points the premium features remove? I would ask learners to diagram the economics of Grow a Garden and annotate where money intersects with progress. And then we can discuss ethics. When does acceleration help exploration? And when does it distort learning goals? The aim isn't to shame spending, it's to make the invisible design visible, so players can choose with intention. After looking at these six ideas, one thing is clear. Grow a Garden may look like a simple farming game, but it's actually a sandbox of learning. In the end, the garden doesn't just grow crops, it grows insight. It proves that learning can hide in the most unexpected places, even in the pixels of a Roblox farm. The next time you play, don't just ask, am I winning? Ask, what am I learning? Because the question might be the most powerful seed you ever plant. If you like this video, like and subscribe, and feel free to check out some of the other videos I have about educational content. See you next time.